Okay, so we are live and welcome to Body Wise Wednesday. I'm Josia Tamir Crossley and I help women who are struggling with the impacts of chronic stress to stop pushing and reclaim the wisdom of their bodies so they can magnetize the life that they truly want. Today's episode of Body Wise Wednesday is part three of four, our four part Navigating the Darker Emotions series. And today we're talking about navigating fear and healing the nervous system. I'm super excited to welcome Irene Lyon. Irene is a nervous system specialist and therapeutic coach who helps people release their deepest traumas from the level of the nervous system, allowing them to finally heal from chronic mental, physical, and emotional conditions that they've tried everything to fix. Irene has extensively studied with Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais, uh, Peter, or the work of Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais, yes. correct? Yeah. Um, Peter Levine, uh, founder of Somatic Experiencing, and Kathy Kane, the founder of Somatic Practice. Mm -hmm. Irene has a master's degree in research and in the fields of biomedical and health science. She regularly appears on podcasts and online summits teaching all things nervous system, healing trauma, and neuroplasticity. And she also facilitates a cutting edge healing program called Smart Body, Smart Mind, designed to give people the knowledge and skills to become their own healers and to really to rewire their own nervous systems, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I've personally gone through her program actually three times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's an amazing program and has, I think, changed the lives of probably hundreds of people at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd say, I'd say so. Awesome. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and you're, I mean, you're an amazing facilitator. I would say you balance, you know, compassion and just deep insight with just such a brilliant scientific background. And I'm so honored to welcome you to the show today. Oh, well, thank you for being here. I'm loving looking into your backyard right now. So that's, <laughs> that's like, I want to transport right into that woody area that I'm staring at. So it's great to talk yeah. to you today. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, welcome right in. <laughs> mm, I know, I just want to jump through the screen. Yeah. Not that where I am is lovely too. I'm right by Kitts Beach on the water. So in, yeah. in Vancouver, so it's beautiful here too. So That's beautiful. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, that ties into something that I want to talk about a little later. Yes. But, you know, the body, mind, and the environment connection. Our, yes. Our, our, our nervous system. Um, yeah. But, you know, just to start off with, um, you know, since we've been doing this this series, Navigating the, the Darker Emotions, I'm mm -hmm. curious to hear from you, how would you say that the well-being of our nervous system or the health of our nervous system impacts our emotional well-being kind of in general? Right. So that you sent me that question before. So I was thinking about it. Right. Um, and what's interesting is that <clears throat> we tend to separate things with the human system and what we or what I am trying to educate people on this really my motto with my online space is education, 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 and more education, which I think you understand. Yeah, it's um, empowering, right? It's empowering. It is. And, you know, I'll speak to that for a second, then I'll get to the question specifically is that we're in a really interesting place as human beings, I think, because we have this really evolved brain the neocortex that allows us to do all the stuff that allows us to communicate like this, you know, invention and creativity. And then we have the other parts of our brain, which is a part of our nervous system. Um, and we can go into the differences if you want in a bit, but um, there's this unconscious part. And then there's this sort of subconscious emotional part. And what we try to do in understanding the human system is we try to like, separate pieces and look at them like specifically. And I think in some instances that's important. Like if someone has a broken bone from an accident, you want the doctor to fix that bone. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's no if, ands or buts. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. But when it comes on like the emotional level. Yeah. <laughs> at, <that point. laughs> at this point. Yeah. But there's this, this, um, organismic, organismic, quality that humans have that really we've missed not that we've missed the mark on we just haven't gotten into this conversation to the depth that we can and that our system is a unit mm. it's just a unit and it ties into the fact that we are a unit with our environment 
Um, and when we, we think about emotions, so I'll say this, often, and one of my mentors, Peter Levine, will ask this question to students, um, is, so where do you think the emotions live? So I'll pose that question, right? And everyone, you know, starts getting all intellectual and, and he's like, they're in the body. That's why we work with the body. If we don't work the, with the body in the specifics, um, we don't tap into these emotions. And so as you've learned with me, um, the body is huge and it's more than just, when we think of working with the body, we think of like lifting weights maybe or stretching, which are all good and that works with the tissues of the body and let's say the cardiovascular system, which is so important, but the emotions are pretty much, if I take my hands here, like from really the throat down to the perineum. And if anybody's ever experienced deep emotional feeling, whether it's joy or sadness or anger or disgust, all of them, mm -hmm. there's somewhere in this section, would you agree from what yeah. you're, yeah. Like you know, the throat, the throat gets constricted, the belly hurts, the heart aches, I feel it in my gut, I can't breathe, you know, that's all this, this stuff. Mm -hmm. And what happens, because we're so smart, if I go back to that, <laughs> we feel these qualities and these really they're sensations, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we try to make sense of them. <clears throat> and because we are such an intellectual species, we have tried to figure out our emotional health via this amazing brain. Right. So part of the well-being of the nervous system, if I go back, I'm reading your question. <laughs> um, part of the emotional well-being um, and how that relates to the nervous system is we have to look at how does the nervous system, how, how does it impact the organal organs, the viscera, the heart, and how do those um, pieces impact um, the nervous system. So it's like this constant two-way street, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things I've always said, and you know this because you've studied the education I've offered, is it's education. Because when we understand these pieces, when we have an emotional thing come up, mm -hmm. whatever it is, positive, negative, however you want to say it, if we know, oh, I'm feeling this in my body, but I'm trying to figure it out intellectually, mm -hmm. what would it be like to actually connect with myself, connect with the environment, and then feel into what is the sensation telling me? Is it a tightness? Is it a clamping? Is it an expansion that feels scary? Mm -hmm. Right? And we can get into why we get disconnected <clears throat> from this body of ours and there's lots of reasons yeah. um but does that satisfy kind of that curiosity of emotions with nervous system the yeah, dark side definitely i mean it sounds like yeah exactly and i mean it sounds like um you're you're also talking about well what i talk about a lot with my people is like that the the emotions have like a signature in the body yeah it's like yeah like there's this actual signature and it's like if you can that unlocks like you can actually find that's the key is like the feeling Totally. Totally. I think we approach it like from like sort of the, this, like you said, the Western mind brain thing is, is it's like we go like, OK, yeah, I felt that. I felt that before. I've already yeah. felt that. I don't need to feel it anymore. <laughs> yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. If only that were the case. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, 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 and that's the thing is um, there's often this thought of when will I be done healing these dark things? Mm -hmm. Right. And again that goes into a lot of our traditional allopathic medical model where you t you it's like sure if you have an infection you need to in, and you might need to take some antibiotics and then your infection is gone right for that's imp that's imp <laughs> exactly not for five but that's yeah. important you know again i'm very much in favor of certain aspects of medicine <clears throat> just like if someone's a diabetic they might need to take insulin and we're yeah. not going to say, don't do that. You know, figure out what's going on in the body. It's like, yeah. no, like there's something actually physically wrong and we need to help it. And thank God we've developed this stuff to do that. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen in my experience, a lot of the chronic pain, 
a lot of the emotional pains, mm -hmm. relational troubles, um, even mental illness, yeah. right? It's all along a spectrum of the, the human system at some point in time, not being able to properly process what's going on in the emotional visceral body. Yeah. And it doesn't just go away. Yeah. You know, you might remember this from one of our emails or courses or videos is that time doesn't heal this stuff actually. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Only we do. Yeah. And so in order to actually d dive into the darker emotions, really sensations, yeah. So I'll say that, like, if we really dig into the emotions, yeah. there's something sensory. Mm -hmm. It might take a person some time and some practice and some apprenticeship to find those sensations because someone may have spent decades, I'll be honest, yeah. decades, an entire lifetime, hiding them and not feeling them. And so to sort of knock on the body's door and say, hey, mm -hmm. feel this sensation. It's like, what do you mean sensation? Yeah. I don't feel a sensation. Yeah. Exactly. Or it's the opposite, which is I'm always feeling sensation. Yeah. Like how do you decide which one to feel? Yeah. Does that right. makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It totally makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, I love that you brought up that point of, you know, time doesn't heal, you know, like just leaving things and not, not allowing them to yeah. process or not doing the work to process them, you know, and I see, you know, a lot of people, I don't know if this is the same for you, but a lot of people mm -hmm. who are drawn to my work are like in their sixties, you know, fifties yep. or sixties. And it's actually like time actually compounds <laughs> the issues in a way, you know, it's like, okay, now it's manifested really on the level of the body where there's like chronic yes. pain and, and more yes. severe health problems happening. And not that that can't be still unwound mm -hmm. and healed, but, um, mm -hmm. but then you know, absolutely. So, yeah. That's a good point. If I can add to the the age thing, because someone asked me this just the other day. Um, it was an older uh, student. I think she, maybe she was in her 60s, which still to me is young. And um, it's like, is there hope for me to heal? It was the question. And I'm like, well, the fact that you're here yeah. and asking these questions and you're thirsty for the knowledge yeah. means that yes. And I said, if you have, I'll use myself as an example, I have really bad osteoarthritis in both of my knees. Mm -hmm. I'm only 42, but it's because of all my injuries and surgeries as a crazy skier when I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. One would say that somewhere in another universe, I could get rid of all that osteoarthritis. Wouldn't that be great? You know, some sci-fi fiction thing where they just take a little zapper and take it all out. But right now, in our way of knowing how to work with the body, I can't get rid of that osteoarthritis, mm -hmm. but I can learn how to function and really use my body and listen to my gut mm -hmm. as to what I need to do to keep those knees healthy, you yeah. see? Well, and, yeah. and it's happened because when doctors look at my x-rays, I shouldn't be able to walk. Mm, wow, that's amazing. So when I, talk to someone who says, is there any hope for me? My often thing is, well, yes, but you have to believe that there's hope for you. Yeah. And you have to want to put in the work because it is work and learning mm -hmm. and feeling the uncomfortable things that you may not want to feel because at some point in our life, if I go back to the topic of um, the darker emotions that this yeah. series is about, right? Yeah. We often don't feel those darker things because we had them come into our system when we didn't have the capacity or the maturity to know what to do with these things. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that actually brings me to, yeah, the next mm -hmm. piece that I wanted to come into, which is, you know, fear, right? Mm -hmm. Fear, because like fear, I think, can have an impact on how we approach healing in, in so many different ways. Yeah. Right. And and one of the big ways is like the fear of fear. Mm -hmm. Fear of feeling. So like when we're, weird. At, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we're like uh, uh, we're actually like afraid or terrified, like you just yeah. said, to feel, you know, the fear or whatever the you know, whatever emotions mm -hmm. or sensations are, are locked in our in our nervous system. Mm -hmm. And I love how um, you know, Peter Levine, I think he says it in several of his books, feeling is healing. And yes. it's so cheesy. It's like so kind of cheesy, right? And so simple, but it's so true. Yeah. So the other 
The other thing he says is pain is trapped sensation. Mm -hmm. So again, like if we're trapping and not sensing what's inside or ignoring it, it will cause some kind of pain. Right. And the thing with the fear is interesting because we'll feel something that feels like we're having a heart attack, right? Mm -hmm. Or we're not going to be able to breathe, like our throat's starting to clamp down or our gut is just like twirling. And again, our culture has done a very clumsy job of teaching us how to be with these big sensations. And so we feel it and we instantly go into the thought that something's wrong as opposed to instantly going into the body and asking what's happening. Yeah. And Getting even there. just, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. just like flipping that a little bit and then reconnecting to the system, reconnecting as we talked about at the very beginning to the environment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. granted the person I'm going to be very specific here, isn't in a, in a toxic, abusive, threatening environment. So that's really key. But if we really are adults and we're living our lives and what's plaguing us are these dark pieces from past, mm -hmm. we have to kind of bring it back to the present moment. It's like, okay, I'm living in my home. I'm no longer in that abusive, toxic, whatever system. Mm -hmm. This is actually safe. And cognitively, sometimes we have to say that, but the biology is like, I'm not so sure. Right. It's like, no, it's not because everything internally in the physiology mm -hmm. in the fear response is saying like danger, danger. Right. The world is dangerous. You're not safe and hide, protect yourself. Don't feel because if you feel these feelings, it's going to be too much and you're not going to be able to protect yourself yeah. by, uh, via either fighting or fleeing or just shutting down and being like invisible kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Right. And I love, I love this. Cause it's like, you know, I actually noticed from a really young age, like when I was in my early twenties, before mm -hmm. I even had delved into all this nervous system work and, and really even deeply into like the healing work at all. Yeah. I noticed that like, whenever I would fall in love or like come mm -hmm. into a relationship that was like, actually like healthy, yes. that, like, all this fear would of come course. up to the surface. Yeah. And I, I always thought that was so interesting. Like, why does that happen? And it's like, it's almost like when we have the safe container. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh oh, this is giving me the quality that I never had before. Right. You know, I'm making an assumption here, but most of the people, when they get into that healthy relationship, it actually is unsafe. Mm -hmm. Right. To, to their physiology and their history, because the past was when I'm in relationship, I have to do these things to make the person, the partner, the parent feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden this great guy or girl comes into my world and they just are fine with the way I am. And I don't have to play any game with myself mm -hmm. or with them mm -hmm. to stay safe. And it really like, it's like it knocks us off yeah, it's like disorienting kind of it like. is. Yeah. And it is. And it gets confusing. You know, this is where I've seen people, you know, leave healthy relationships because they can't accept the kindness and the empathy. And it's like it's hard because when we've been wired to have a wall of protection and then we find that protection, it is it is, like you said, disorienting. And then it takes obviously um, some really interesting work to feel that and be with that and actually feel probably often it's the terror, mm -hmm. the sense of um, abandonment, all these things that we would have felt when we were really little and we had to kind of push away. Mm -hmm. And then the body will not forget. That's one thing that Peter Levine will often say, like the body doesn't forget. The mind might try to make a story, but the body will give you what it needs. And so what often happens is when these dark fears come up, they will come up sometimes in the form of a symptom or a pain or a muscle tightness or a weird behavior that doesn't make sense. Right. And if we don't have um, the education yeah. to know what's going on, we can get really wrapped up in doomsday mm -hmm. and try to intellectualize it and, um, 
I was talking actually to some of my uh, colleagues just the other day, some of the people on my team. Mm -hmm. And one person said, you know, when you really look at this work of the nervous system and education and learning about it, um, it's really simple. <laughs> it's, it's quite simple, the practices, as yeah. you have maybe experienced. Yeah. The Feldenkrais stuff is more advanced because that's more advanced. But the basics of learning how to be in the system, listen to it, feel it, touch it, it's pretty darn simple. But our mind will keep playing games with us to look for something more complicated. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too, like I was thinking about when you were kind of saying that that earlier as well, like how when we have like a physical symptom come up, mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm having a heart attack or I can't breathe and there's yeah. something wrong. And it's like, we almost like give up our power because we're like, oh, I, I better like go to the doctor and get this fixed. Yeah. And start being like, oh, well, what can I, like what's happened, what's actually happening yes. here? And coming to it with that curiosity. Totally. And, 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 you know, I'll say a story about that because about two years ago, two years ago now, um, I did go to the hospital because I had what was considered a panic attack. I've never had anything like that in my life. I was driving and it's like everything just got small. I started to, I had to like take my shirt off and my shoes off while driving. Cause I just started sweating. Wow. I'm like, am I having a stroke? What's going on here? <laughs> and I won't get into all the specifics of what was happening in my life, but things were really gelling and my relationship was good. And, uh -huh. but I was trapped in traffic uh -huh. and wow. I've never had trouble in car sitting. I remember reading your story about that. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, Oh, and I had to like actually pull over when I got across the Lionsgate bridge, I was going over the Lionsgate bridge here in Vancouver. <laughs> I'm like, okay, don't stop on the bridge because that will then be on the news. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so do as much as you can to ground, open the windows, long exhales to keep mm -hmm. the heart rate down because I could feel my heart just beating. Mm -hmm. And um, I came home and my husband, who's also a colleague, Seth, yeah. he has never seen me so shooken up. And he actually, which is not like him, said, you should probably go to the hospital and just get yourself checked out. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, but I went, they kept me there for six hours, hooked me up to like EKGs, took blood, asked me some questions. And, and, and then even the next day they did a stress test where I'm on like a treadmill running. Yeah. Okay. And the guy, the guy looks at me, he's like, you're just a healthy 40 year old female. Like, I'm not sure what happened. Right. He's like, are you under some stress? I'm like, well, nothing that isn't. But what was happening, I think, because this work is a long, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. I started studying oh, yeah. this work <laughs> in 2004. So again, it's like, it, it doesn't end. Mm -hmm. But um, I think my system was just in a place of really deep safety with what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And the system was like, you know, goody, <laughs> we're nice. gonna give you something that you have not processed. and that processing is still unraveling it's still unveiling and it's connected to and i'll share some of my earlier um surgical traumas as a little kid some of the relationship stuff with my mom and dad they were great parents they never beat me they never did anything bad to me but their own stuff got transferred into my system and and it was just my biology finally going okay, you've got lots of capacity. We're going to throw you this thing of intense fear, which yeah. felt like a heart attack. Right. Yeah. yeah. And here's the thing. If someone doesn't have that safety on board or that capacity or the knowledge, they could put the, I know this is going to sound crazy, but they could put themselves into a drastic medical thing. Mm -hmm because they're they're not able to bring it back down and actually feel and let the sensations run their course. That is so you know? Does that make sense? Like we can spiral up in positive yeah. feedback, yeah. a little bit of a sensation into something that's more severe. Mm -hmm. So again, this is where that education and not being afraid, like I was like, sure, I'll go to the hospital. Right. And it wasn't, you know. Right. And, it's, and in a way, it's like that's creating more safety for yourself and yeah. orientation to like, okay, I'm not having a heart attack. That's, yeah, I'm yeah. healthy. There's no, yeah, the chemicals showed that nothing, you know, nothing was blocked, mm. all that kind of stuff. So I think we, you know, we got to be intelligent about it yeah. too. Yeah. But our bodies are fascinating. Like the nervous system will keep old, old stuff 
in our system. So, yeah, but fear is a big one because that's sort of that primal survival response. Mm -hmm. And then we interpret, we try to interpret it in all sorts of ways. But really, if we cut it down to the most basic primal thing, it's our survival response, trying to protect either us or our, usually for mothers, they're young. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah. And so it just, it just, uh, you know, something that I wanted to get into a little bit and then mm -hmm. I don't want to take too much time with this, yeah. but, but, you know, it's really interesting this sort of like, and I, I think we've kind of touched on it, but I just want to emphasize it that like when we have trauma, it like, it almost like switch, like our, like our fear response is healthy. Like if we're like, Oh, dark alley, I probably like shouldn't go there. Mm -hmm. I feel afraid. Or like, I'm not going to maybe get my car in the dark parking lot and like, yeah myself because that's scary well that's healthy fear right it's guiding us away from things mm -hmm. that are but it's almost like there's something that happens isn't there where it gets reversed when yeah so I'll, that's a good point so and this is where it becomes a little gray for some because if we've had an experience that has been um threatening that has posed a threat to our system this has harmed us mm -hmm. um we will be heightened to that fear mm -hmm. if right so i'll i'll use the example I, these examples are never fun but let's say someone was attacked right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're they were violated um it was unsafe they couldn't defend themselves they were harmed mm -hmm. within that human system is a desire to fight right. and protect and boundaries and get the heck out of there and all those like biology not the i should have done something different right. it's the biology of i want to fight but if i do right now my nervous system is also protecting me by going into a shutdown response right yeah because it's not safe because it's not safe and yeah. so people that have been attacked men and women and children mm -hmm. um they have to understand their system their nervous system actually did them a favor by shutting down right. exactly. because it didn't cause them to fight more, which would have caused more harm. And it actually numbed their body so that they don't feel the pain. Mm -hmm. Here's where it gets tricky is that if that individual doesn't have the opportunity or the um, resource to understand this from that biological point of view mm -hmm. in their system is still this survival response kind of cycling wanting to fight, wanting to protect, or right. still shut down. Right. So what occurs is say they go out into the world and they're down, they're walking down that dark alley. Mm -hmm. Two things happen typically. There'll be the person that just walks down any alley, mm -hmm. walks onto a cliff, mm -hmm. parks their car somewhere, and they won't really have the perception that this could be dangerous because they're so shut down. Right. And so then what that happens, what happens is it, and again, um, this is, you know, a broad generalization, but they will then attract and not be aware of the environment and that can get them into more trouble mm -hmm. because they're not perked up to that sensory perception. It's called neuroception, the mm -hmm. perception of danger. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Porges, who um, coined the polyvagal theories and has really understood all the different vagus nerve branchings, he coined that term neuroception. It's our perception of safety. So there's the person that's been so shut down that they actually don't even know that they're going down a dark alley until they're down that alley and they're in trouble. Right. Or they bump into things. They're clumsy mm -hmm. because their system is actually shut down and not sensing their environment. Yeah. So that's yeah. one example. And then the person that's still stuck in say a fight flight yeah. and that's their predominant nervous system state um, will be anxious. They won't want to go out. They will fear everything. Right. And so they will also have a perception that's off, but it's not because the environment is off necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's because their physiology is not right. um, clean. It would be one way of saying it. Like it, they're, yeah. they're revving, looking for threat or they're hiding from threat. Yeah, it's still firing on the like, this is still happening on some level. Kind of thing, exactly. Talking. And exactly. And their nervous system actually thinks it's still happening. Right. Um, you know, if you were to take an animal and put them into the wild with that kind of physiology, they wouldn't survive very long. Yeah. yeah. Right? But because us humans were so different and so unique, 
we can get by with a lot of coping strategies, a lot of ways to micromanage these fears and these biological um, wirings. Yeah. And what happens eventually, and again, I'm generalizing, but we're seeing this in the research, especially um, the research called the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, is when there's been a lot of threat, a lot of stress in the system young, if that system doesn't release those stored responses, eventually the system will get sick mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. chronic illness. Mm -hmm. What a person gets is dependent on their genetic predisposition. Right. Right. So if I go, yeah. exactly, if I go back to myself as an example, there's history on my mom's side of stroke and heart problems. Okay. Yeah. Also on my dad's side. So it makes sense that one of my reactions was heart based. Mm, wow. Right. And yeah. it isn't it isn't an emotional kind of woo woo thing. It's like cardiovascularly, that right. might be my weak spot. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, so that's kind of this interesting thing with fear and how we put ourselves into situations and it's totally unconscious. Yeah. So it's no one's fault, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Is that exactly. right. Yeah. It's and I'm curious about like there's a place that you <laughs> I know with some people who have experienced severe trauma that like when they're in like an emergency type situation yeah. it's almost like this thing kicks in where they're like oh I'm actually calm now like more calm than I usually am mm -hmm. Is that, this, the same totally it, yeah well it, it's cult it's an interesting thing especially in um our capitalistic culture in that yeah. There'll be two forms of people. And actually, um, I was just privileged to be with Peter at a one day event a few weeks ago. And he, you know, he said there's often two types of individuals when there's been early trauma hmm. and early stress is one will be incredibly weak and sick and display like chronic illness, chronic fatigue, kind of the fibromyalgia, hmm. mental health troubles. And then the other will be type A, highly successful, highly driven, so capable, and they are, but that's also been a coping mechanism. The thing, the reason he was mentioning this was because one of the clients he was working with was a successful person. Right, yeah. But, to, to, but what happened is there was a triggering event in his life okay. and, and, and what looked as though was really solid actually was on a really shaky foundation. Yeah. And so this event just blew apart his system and then he ended up getting cancer and chronic pain and all these things. Um, also a stroke, like all these things just started tumbling, mm -hmm. um, but they had been highly successful, but the trauma early was really, really severe. Mm -hmm. And so there's this interesting thing where a person, um, may not know that they're susceptible to this because they're quite um, well, well to do. Yeah. They're doing really well. And yet, yeah. does that, right? Yet yeah. there's something underneath that's just kind of waiting. Right. Yeah. Sort of a, a really interesting analogy for like what's happening on the planet right now. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you we are correct, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other conversation, but it's true. Like we have to remember, um, this actually what we spoke about the very first few minutes when we started talking was where our organism is a unit yeah. and our organism is a unit with all the other units in the planet mm -hmm. and we're connected to all of every, everything's connected as mm -hmm. cheesy as that is. It's true. Mm -hmm. And yet we forget. Right. And so that's where, um, when I really get down to the macro picture and for some, this can be a little like what to think about. We're like a cell of the planet. Each human contributes to the energy of the planet based on how we hold things in, based on how we set boundary, all that stuff. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so it's kind of an interesting, when we look at it that way, health mm -hmm. kind of takes on a different meaning. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I love, I know you talk about that in a lot of your stuff, just how it's like, you know, your big why is like really about like, it's not well, just like personal healing, which is really important, you know, for everyone to feel amazing. Mm -hmm. and feel their mm -hmm. best, but, like, but this is the work that I really believe as well, that we really need like globally, we have to look at our trauma, our unprocessed grief and, you know, to be able to 
show up in a way that we yeah. need to get the planet through the crisis that we're in right now. Totally. And, you know, the, the thing that's interesting that you just said that sparked a piece in my brain was we want to feel our best. We want to feel amazing to get to that point. For many of us, we're going to have to feel some stuff that ain't so amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's a tricky one because thus far, a lot of the self-help world and a lot of all of this world has been about how to feel your best, how to feel happy. Yeah. It's been a very positive twist. And of course we want that. We want to feel vigor, but we also have been kind of looking away from the, the more toxic stuff that has just been there. Right. And I think that's why a lot of stuff is just bubbling up. It just, it can't be kept under the rug anymore. Yeah. It's like things said, like that foundation, like find like, yeah. what, what is our foundation made of in order totally. to, we have to be willing to go there, you know, to go down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. And, and Peter also, I'm quoting him a lot today, but he's top of mind right now. He has said that the, the humanity will not become enlightened. I don't love that term, but his words, not mine. It, it won't become enlightened until every single human being on the planet has regulated their nervous system. Absolutely. So if we really look at that, that's a big job. <laughs> <laughs> it is a big job. You know? Yeah. And so we also have to take this with some ease because we might not get through all of it in this lifetime. We may not see every single person reach that regulation. And you and I being in this work, you know, we have to do what we can and help how we can and educate people. And then at the end of the day, it's their choice. Yeah. It's, you know, it's their choice how they, they respond. And it, it's a tricky one when you are a caring, empathetic person mm -hmm. is you want to help everyone and you want everyone to be healed. Mm -hmm. And yet you still have to take care of yourself because mm -hmm. that's a nervous system thing too. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And be, you know, I mean, I guess that's also part of the, the, like being willing to just feel what is, you know, mm -hmm. what is and to feel, to be with what is on, on the planet, you know, without, without expecting it to change. And, you know, I think that's something that we encounter when we come into the nervous system work as well as it's like, yeah. we want like this, it, we're used to this like Western medicine, like instant change, like you were saying, you know, and it's like, it's not, <laughs> although it can be huge, it can be enormous, like really incredible what somebody experiences in a year or two years yep. life complete pivot and yet it's like it, you know it's it's not that same kind of instant like five days 14 days kind of like thing. no it's not and it's it's you know we've been taught to want those things it's how we were educated in school you know mm -hmm. and I mean I'm I'm in that boat too I offer things that are specific times and dates and no matter mm -hmm. and it's very in, it's it's important to convey that while a person might learn in a set period of time, that learning doesn't end, mm -hmm, exactly. you know, like, were you ever in school where, you know, the, the, the woman or the teacher would give you the lesson and someone would say, is this on the test? Right. You know, like, <laughs> do you remember that? It's like, yeah. is this on the test? Do I have to actually know this so that mm -hmm. I can get a grade? Right. And I think that's such interesting information because that's how most of us were encouraged and motivated to learn. Yeah. And this is not that that. Yeah. Exactly. Learning this stuff, it isn't it's all on the test. It's all I was gonna say that it's all on the test. <laughs> you know, it's all on the test. And yeah. it's gonna be messy, it's not gonna be perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, and there isn't one one magic bullet mm -hmm. pill, however you wanna call it. Um, and I was just listening to um, a podcast the other day with Gabor Maté, whom I'm sure you know of, and he was being interviewed by Tim Ferriss, who has a fairly popular podcast. Yeah. And Tim is all about hacking things and getting things done quickly and fast. Like that's his model. Work, work week, right? So, yeah, yeah. And just like, yeah. how can we learn a language in one week? Right. Yeah. No one can learn a language really well. Like when we're little, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. And so he said to Gabor, he's like, yeah, I've been trying to like heal all this early stuff and find that one thing. And Gabor just was like, there is no one thing. Yeah. And, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to realize that. Yeah. So that puts a wrench in his business model. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't promote something that's just, it, it's a, an amalgamation. 
yeah. of things. Yeah. And then a person has to take what they take, use it, and then go on to the next and the yeah. next and the next. Yeah. And yet you said, you know, it's like, it's all on the, t on the test. It's all like so key. These, these tools that you mm -hmm. can use in your yeah. program, all so, so, so key. And, and just to come back to, you know, Peter's quote yeah. about enlightenment, like my favorite definition of, it, uh, of enlightenment comes from Chogyam Trungpa, because I think we, we often th um, think of enlightenment in the West as like, I'm just gonna feel blissed out all the time. Mm, yeah. And, and what Chogyam Trungpa says is actually that, and you know, his definition of an enlightenment is to be able to fully feel, you know, to allow mm -hmm. the energy to move through our being and fully feel, you know, whatever is happening in any given moment. And I just mm -hmm. love that. That's, you know, orientation to yeah. happening and just allowing, you know, the capacity in the system. It, it, it totally, it's it, what is, it's what, it's the real um, premises of Vipassana meditation, right? Just yeah. noticing what comes up and not judging it and feeling it and moving and watching it move. Um, and then growing the capacity to be with what's coming up. Yeah, exactly. in the system, right? And there's so many more little, you know, intricate things that come in when working with the nervous system that I've learned from you. And um, and you have mm -hmm. right now, uh, mm -hmm. actually opening today, yeah. this, your first, uh, your video training series, three-part video training yep. series, and the first video is on fight, the fight, flight. Fight, fight, flight, freeze. Yeah, it's, yeah. um the first video is really interesting. I love it. Um, I like all of them, but that one gets into the survival responses um, one of my favorite analogies of sw a swimming pool and beach balls inside, I won't get into it all, um, but it's, you know, this way in which we have to have capacity in our system to feel what's going on inside. But if we have too much inside clogging up the pool, then we can't feel. And so this kind of, it, that first video really speaks to the intricacies of the uniqueness of each person and their path mm -hmm. and it starts with education mm -hmm. i kind of sound like a broken record around that but i find that Important. when yeah. I, yeah like even when i used to do the training the video training that's on right now um live in my office i would get emails from people after a three-hour lecture saying wow i just got home and noticed something totally different about how i felt myself walking home based on just the information. We didn't do any practice. Right. And the reason why that works, I think, is because we are cognitive. Yeah. And so exactly. we're so, we are so smart. So when we yeah. get that knowledge, if someone is really open to it, they will start to actually shift how they notice things internally mm -hmm. based on that knowledge versus trying to first notice the inside but not really knowing what we're looking for. Right, exactly. That makes sense. Totally. And I mean, yeah. the other thing that I love about I think the whole video training series, but especially this first one, is mm. that you know it really like having this knowledge. I think really takes the shame out of yes. all this stuff that we're feeling. Yeah. Like we think we're messed up and whatever, and it's like well, actually, there's this like biological thing that's happening. You know, mm -hmm. like the science of it. It's like this is just what's happening. It's the what's biology. happening. It's natural. It's like our only option actually when we haven't had the support to and the tools and the skills to yeah. process what's exactly. So I think exactly. It's really important for people to watch, and I'd super, super encourage. Yeah. Encourage you guys to check out Irene's free three-part video training series. Mm -hmm. I'll pop the link um, mm -hmm. up here, and then also yeah. in the comments. Um, yeah, that I don't know if that's clickable. Actually, I'll just pop this in the comments. Here. Love this technology. Yeah, <laughs> technology. Open in the comments. I'm watching the things go over my screen. <laughs> um, yeah, and then and then you also have a, a program that's starting mm -hmm. soon. You usually do it twice a year, but you're only doing it once this year. So I'd yep. for you to just talk a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. So the Healing Trauma Series um, is complimentary. It's free. So that's today. Basically, when a person signs up, just to let your viewers know, they get the, the videos as they release. So today is video one, Friday is video two, and Monday is video three. Um, I think it's important to watch them in consecutive fashion because it builds. Um, but within the second and third video, I, I mention the program I've created, which is smart body, smart mind. Hence, having this smart body, it's not just about physical fitness, it's about being aware of the parts and the stress physiology and how our gut is feeling and the heart and the lungs and all the things that I won't get into now, but really how our biology works. Um, so when we 
increase the smartness of that body, the mind increases its smartness and it kind of, mm -hmm. it's sort of this cycle. So the program, um, I developed it because I realized that a lot of what I was doing with my clients in private practice was guiding them mm -hmm. through noticing their bodies and teaching them. Like I would get out a whiteboard and, and after a while you're like, this just needs to be taught in a more concise way. So I started creating audio lessons and video lessons. And then over the course of probably about two years, it formed into this 12 week program. Yeah. And um, it starts April 17th. It goes to July 8th. You are correct this year. We're running it once a year. We have in the past run it twice a year. Um, but when a person registers, when they participate, the content, the learning, the education, and the, the I call them neurosensory exercises, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, which are a blend of Peter Levine's work, Kathy Kane's work, and Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais's work. It's kind of all blended. Mm -hmm. um, that material is the person's forever. So you get to do it and work through it. Um, and it really has shown me the power of education. Yeah, it's so right. It, it's <laughs> It's simple in many ways, mm -hmm. and it brings up lots of stuff. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I have to say, like, as somebody who's done gone through the program a couple of times, like, it's yeah. so nice to be able to just, yeah, go back to those exercises. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I teach them to my clients, but like you yeah. said, like, <laughs> now I'm like, okay, try, all my clients, I just want them to do that program because, like you said, it's like, why pay me, you know, you know, so lots, lots, a lot. to, lots yeah. right? Yeah. Or, or a therapy, you know, because you know, yeah. we, we charge a lot for this work. And so why pay, mm -hmm. you know, why pay some one-on-one -on -one to do that, learn the teaching yeah. pieces when you can go and learn that on your own and then bring what comes up to, exactly. to the, the sessions where you're getting the support. So exactly. So I'm yeah. really excited about. <laughs> I'm excited for the next round too. I mean, it's, it's been an evolution, you know, it's been great to watch really what can happen when someone mm -hmm. takes their time. You know, the program is, comprehensive like it's 12 weeks long out of those 10 weeks we have 10 modules and each module is four lessons four lessons might not seem like a lot over a seven day period <laughs> yeah it's a lot yeah and yeah. you know we could make it such that the program is 12 months long but yeah. that would also exhaust people too and so we've kept it at that 12 week kind of we've bookended it there so that in that 12 weeks, it's kind of like going and doing a university course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually three months long, you do a lecture a week, you do your homework, you go to your tutorials, you ask questions, but then at the end of that semester, you go off and you do maybe your next course. Right. Or you might have to repeat the course. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly, like it's exactly. No, and I think that's really, really valuable to be able to, you know, focus maybe intensively and have your support yeah. for a period of time and then to go and just, you know, really integrate it. And it does take, I think, a long time, you know, like it I think does. I've said before, it could be a year long, you know, but yeah. uh, able to have that time to integrate and then, you mm -hmm. know, come back to it. And the Facebook group is great for support mm -hmm. too. And one of the things that I love about it as well is just the, um, when you do the Q and A, because I think we can learn so much from yes. like come onto that together. It's like, Oh, that person's talking about something that I deal yeah. with. My client is, is dealing with, and um, it's yeah. really so much from those calls too. The calls are great because yeah. basically any answer or any question that someone asks is going to provide education for someone else, mm -hmm. even though you might not know it. And even witnessing someone with that question and feeling in your own system mm -hmm. how that responds. I can't think of how many, like so many times I've been in my training programs where I'm learning and I don't even think that the t content that the, te the teacher is about to teach is going to do anything f for me. Right. And then within two you know, minutes, I'm like, crying and my heart's a little more I'm like what's going on mm -hmm. and it's because somewhere in my system is yeah. a piece that yeah. relates to that thing exactly and so yeah. this is where group learning it's I so think yeah. is so powerful our model of helping humans has been very much one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. and I love it and I will continue to do that kind of work yeah. but there is something very potent yeah when we come together one people i find um victimize themselves less yeah 
and they realize everyone's got pain. Exactly. Everyone's got pain. Yeah. You know, I often say um, everyone's, no one's to blame and everyone's to blame. I know that might sound a bit harsh, but mm -hmm. no one's to blame and everyone's to blame. Yeah. So no one really is to blame about any of the stuff that's going on right now. And yeah. yet we all are in it. So we're all responsible. Yeah, we all have to take responsibility. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I, I mean, I'm biased, but the program has been <laughs> really fun to work with. It's been great to see what happens when someone just takes the information and does the work. Yeah. Self, exactly. self, it's, yeah, it's self study as you know. Mm -hmm. So there has to be that, that yeah. desire mm -hmm. to sure. show up for yourself. Yeah. Um, and then me and there's about eight of us now who are my colleagues, all somatic experiencing practitioners. When we're in session, we're answering questions in the Facebook group. It isn't group therapy. That's one thing to be clear about. Mm -hmm. It is to me, it's group education, yeah. Yeah. self process. And we're very upfront. Like if someone is really struggling with a specific thing, we say it would be good to see someone and then yes. we refer people. Okay. Right. So yeah. that's kind of the the premise of it. It's it sometimes gets seen as group therapy because people are healing so much stuff, yeah. but we're really doing self study and learning together. And then a person takes that information and does what they will with it. And it's pretty cool to watch how people evolve that as you have as well. Absolutely, yeah. Right? It's just really cool to just yeah to to both experience it for myself and just see what happens for people inside inside the program. It's really inspiring. Yeah. So. And it and it informs your clients, right? Because you work with people, yeah. and yeah. you know there's a there's something that occurs when you learn for yourself mm -hmm. this knowledge. You know, often people will ask me, "Oh, am I certified now to teach this?" And the thing is, is well, you're certified to teach what you want to teach based on your practice and your scope of practice, mm -hmm. your credentials, right? So if there's anyone here that's a, a helper or a healer or a mind body pro, it's cool to see who contacts us after they've done the program and they give us these cool stories about how they've played with some of the concepts when they've worked with their kids or their school kids, if they're teachers, yeah. right? And they're not doing the lessons that yeah. I teach. Right. They're making up their own way of doing it. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Mm. Right. Yeah. Just like a ripple, a ripple effect. Out, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, you know, the more also the more um, just connected and um, regulated within our own nervous systems we yes. get, the more like that just like mirror, like um, we can mirror that for our clients. Right. And then yep. they, it's, it's like actually a direct, you know, direct feedback. Totally. That, so it's really, really valuable for, it's been really valuable for me as a practitioner. And that's good to hear. Yeah, definitely. So thank you so much for joining You're us. Welcome. Today, You're welcome. Yeah, You're for welcome. any of you who are listening and are interested in, um, you know, what Irene's talking about, her course, and, and you know, I'd really suggest you click on the link below and definitely sign up for the, the free three parts. Yeah. Get in on that series that's happening now. You know that's almost mm -hmm. like a prerequisite for jumping into the the longer program, isn't it? To, uh, I don't make I don't you know check people's homework, <laughs> but I I like I'm I'm about adult learning, so I say these videos. If you do anything, watch them. Whether you join the program or not, it'll yeah. give you some really good tools and ideas about what this is education that really at this point, it's hard to find that education because I pulled it from all different sources. Um, so definitely watch those. It'll be up until the 16th, but I suggest doing that way before the 16th of April. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and yeah, just, and then in that, there's a Facebook group where th there's ways to comment and ask questions. So that's another great. place okay. that people that's can. That's great, yeah, and when people yeah. sign up for the free uh, video series, then they get uh, invited into the Facebook group. You got it. So that's like totally complimentary. And in that group are my team answering questions. So that's there um, kind of as a complimentary piece. Um, and then, of course, the program proper is paid. It's separate. And then that's like an actual closed like school. Yeah, if you will. Awesome. Well, this is a yeah. great opportunity, you guys. Irene's offering such a huge resource here with the free three part healing trauma video series. So definitely I've posted the link in the comments below here. So definitely cool. click on that. And <laughs> which way? Yeah, where <laughs> is it? <laughs> um, 
yeah, so definitely click on that and and check it out. And yeah. um, and uh, thank you so much for you're for welcome today. You're welcome. And, it's good to connect with you. It's been a few years, hasn't yeah, it? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's really great to yeah just speak with you in person. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll keep yeah. doing it. Have you on here again? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to come to your living room. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh yeah, you're welcome here anytime. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, and so stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be talking about uh, adrenal health and mm -hmm. how adrenal health links to the nervous system. Important. Yeah, so mm -hmm. stay tuned. Body Wise Wednesdays, thanks so much for joining us today and have an amazing week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.